might look like sand, but it's actually metal powder. And it's so fine that it can be easily inhaled into your lungs, which is why we have to be very careful when we're handling it. But how do you take this metal powder and turn it into this? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you today. To print our manifolds, we're using 316L stainless steel. Now that L actually represents a lower carbon content compared to regular 316 stainless. And that lower carbon content is gonna give our hydraulic manifold superior corrosion resistance. So let's get this powder into our supply cylinder so that we can print our parts. Our build just finished and what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm sweeping all of the excess powder back into the build cylinder before I cap it and take it over to our depowdering station to be cleaned up. All the powder has been wiped up. So right now I'm going through and I'm actually gonna cap this build cylinder and we're gonna remove it completely from our machine and unpack it in our depowdering station. One of the cool things about the TruePrint 3000 is you can actually add a second cap on top of this first cap. Now that's important because if there's a big hole here, all the nitrogen that's inside of our print chamber would escape. And then when we restart another build, we'd have to re-inert our entire build chamber. So right now we're pulling our supply cylinder out and we're actually gonna hook this up to our sieve station and then we're gonna put all the leftover powder from our build through our sieve and back into our supply cylinder. So right now we're pulling our build cylinder. Now all of our parts are actually inside of that cylinder right now along with the extra powder used for our build. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over to our depowdering station and then we're gonna hook it up to our depowder station and we're gonna run it all through the sieve back into our supply cylinder. So this is what's gonna be used to actually lift the lid of our build cylinder off during the depowdering. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook this clamp right here to these slots. Once this is flipped upside down, then it'll actually pull this lid off and then put it back on when it's done. We're gonna completely flip our build cylinder upside down and it's gonna take all the leftover powder and it's gonna take it through this hose into our sieve and then back into our supply cylinder for a future build. Now the cool thing about this system is while we're doing all this, our printer is just running and running and running. We remove the build cylinder, and then we can take a second build cylinder with a pre-installed build plate. We can load that into the printer, start it back up while we unpack our parts on our depowdering station. Because this powder is very, very fine, 15 to 45 microns roughly, and so you can easily inhale it. As a safety precaution, we wear these respirators and it filters the air, keeps all the particles out of our lungs. Man, these things look super good. I love this part of the process when we get to reveal the parts and see how they turned out. But now let's vacuum up all this powder so we can take a closer look. So here are the hydraulic manifolds. They were designed using an algorithmic engineering approach by a company called Leap 71. You can tell your algorithm things like your wall thickness, your minimum overhanging angle, your port size, and all of the things you need for your manifold design. Then when you run the algorithm, it's gonna reroute all of your ports so that they don't collide and so that they have the appropriate wall thickness that you determined in the algorithm. It's gonna also create these support struts. So that's gonna allow you to create any port that you want out in space and then the algorithm will take that and it'll create a support strut so that you don't have support structures in those areas. Another thing that I think is cool is if we go into a sectional view, you'll see that in here, it would be very difficult and even impossible in most cases to remove the support structures from these areas within our manifold. We actually use the algorithm to say, hey, 
we want three quarters of an inch of support right at the front of each port, but then we wanna transition into a teardrop shape so that we don't need supports in the areas where we can't remove them. So you'll see right here, we have a nice round hole, but then as we move back into the unsupported areas, it transitions into a teardrop shape so that it'll print successfully with no supports in those areas. All right, so there you have it. We cleaned up all of our manifolds and now they're ready to be cut from their build plate. I just wanna talk about real quick, why would we 3D print hydraulic manifolds? Well, that's because we can make them more lightweight, we can make them more compact so they can fit into small places, and we can make them more efficient because our channels are curved and we don't have pressure drop from having abrupt 90 degree junctions. Plus, since we're using additive, we're only adding material where we need it, so there's very little waste. I hope you guys enjoyed watching these manifolds take shape. I'm really happy with the way they turned out, and I'm gonna be posting these on CNC Expert. That's the platform that we created for machinists by machinists where we can showcase our work to the entire world. We can connect with vendors, potential employers or employees, and it's all completely free. We also have our Discord, so if you haven't joined, come hang out with all the machinists here at Titans of CNC. Please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you guys next time. Is there any chance you could pull this off? I would bet my life on it. That I can't pull this off? With your hands, absolutely not. Oh my God, dude. How what about this? Do you think you could break that off? I think you could probably break that off. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. Is that stuck on me? My hand. <laughs> it's funny because that's actually something that most people don't know is you can use the build plate as fixture, as work holder. So say you printed something and you had to do some finished machining, you can just hold on to the build plate and machine on it because it's welded to it. The more you know. <laughs>